everyone. Welcome to the Race Safe app training for the medical team. Again, thank you again for utilizing Race Safe to help you keep your event more safe. Uh, Race Safe is going to be our primary electronic documentation tool that we, we, we're going to be utilizing for this year's event as the medical team is providing care out in the field uh, during your event this year. Right. Race Safe also is a great communication tool that you can utilize to get in contact with your leadership and also with other medical team members. So the Race Safe app actually has a few different faces. The primary face, of course, which most medical team members are going to be utilizing is going to be that mobile app. On that mobile app, you're going to be able to actually document care in real time as you're providing care to the uh, to athletes out in the field, whether that's, again, something that's assessment based or something minor as handing out an ice pack or whatever it may be. Right. The second phase of the race safe platform is essentially now the command module that the leadership team can go ahead and utilize to actually view what's going out out in the field in real time. So, again, as the medical team members are utilizing the mobile app to document care, um, as you can kind of see in the center of the screen, the leadership team can then utilize the command module to kind of see, again, what patients are being seen in real time, how many patients are being seen. And again, where some of those things are happening in case you need additional resources like EMS or whatever it may be to actually respond to your specific location. Right. And then a third aspect of it is going to be that, again, with the Race Safe platform, data collection, data analysis is really easy. Pretty much as you're documenting care, our system is analyzing it and putting together different types of graphs and different types of data sets to be able to kind of summarize in a very quick and simple form in regards to what happened during your event. Uh, again, post event, we can go ahead and run this analysis to kind of see again who was the busiest and what kind of prevalent injuries, illnesses, or treatments were actually provided to your athletes uh, very quickly post event, right? Also, just as a reminder, again, this platform is HIPAA compliant, uh, which again, does mean that you may potentially be dealing with some personal health information um, throughout the app if athletes choose to share their medical information with the medical team. So again, just being uh, uh, just again as a reminder that everyone should be HIPAA compliant and just keeping that in the back of your minds as you're documenting so on and such. So again, get started. Uh, again, if you are a medical team member utilizing the actual mobile app itself, go ahead and you can visit your app store, whatever that may be for Apple users or Android. Uh, again, on the Google Play Store, you can go ahead and just search Race Safe, and you would see our logo there. You can go ahead and download that app right onto your phone from that app store, whatever that may be. From there, the next step is actually then going to be um, the event itself should have sent you, if, if they haven't already sent it to you already, some type of medical team sign up link. Again, that is specific to this year's event, which means that even if you have volunteered with us or again, been part of another medical team a prior year, you do have to re-register for this year's event to make sure that you're on the proper rosters and make sure that you're in the system appropriately. If you are a new user, again, welcome. Uh, you, there's a few different ways that you can go about doing this. After you see that link uh, from your actual event leadership, this is one of the this is the page that you should see again. Whether you can log in with a prior credential that you have created with us, or you can go ahead and create a new account via a Google email or an Apple email, or simply again you can create an account via any other email platform and so so on and such. And again, I would say, again, write down your password or whatever it may be, simply because this is going to be the same exact login information that you're going to be utilizing when you actually now open up the mobile app on your phone. So when you've created an account or logged in and properly registered and gone through the registering process, then you can go ahead and go to your phone or your mobile app, and you can go ahead and log in with the same exact credentials. After you sign in, you can go ahead and then enter a passcode. And again, this is just one of the security features that we have to just make sure that all the information is protected. This passcode can be anything else, uh, anything that you would like. like we typically say and make it the same as your phone password or whatever it may be. Um, just as a reminder, if you do forget your passcode, you would have to log out and re-sign back in uh, to, and create a new passcode essentially. But again, once you create this passcode, you don't have to sign in every single time with your full email. All you have to do is just punch in that passcode and it should give you access to the app after that initial sign in. Okay. So once you have properly registered and properly signed in, you should see your event pop up somewhere on this next screen, which is gonna be the screen that you typically see after you enter in that passcode. Now, again, if you do not see this year's event or the event you're trying to work for, and if it's not on this actual list, that means that you probably have not completed the registration process. And I would highly encourage you uh, to click on that link again that was provided to you and just make sure that you know, you 
agreed to all the terms and actually went through the whole thing to make sure that you were actually registered and completed that registration process. Again, once you do, uh, if anything, you can go ahead and close out the app, maybe do a quick reset. Uh, and again, your event should show up if you have been properly registered. So if your event does show up, go ahead and click on your event, which one, at, whichever one that may be. And then this is actually gonna be the screen that you probably, uh, this is gonna be the main landing screen. And this is where you can record minor assistances, again, things like band-aids or ice packs or whatever. Or again, that teal button is actually going to, again, which is titled search athlete medical record. That's gonna be able to allow you to actually open up an athlete's profile and actually document care as well um, through the mobile app itself, right? So the, again, the enter ID section, again, you can go ahead and enter that athlete's ID number, again, whether it's a bib number or whatever that event has decided is gonna be the identif identifier for the specific athletes. Uh, and you also toggle between, um, you can also toggle between numbers, letters. Um, if your event is utilizing a barcode, again, you can also scan barcodes to get uh, that ID into that search field. So whichever ID that you are utilizing, go ahead and type that in in whatever way and then click on uh, that search athlete medical record. Once you do so, this can be the next screen that you see. So this screen is asking essentially, are you recording a new problem or are you, you know, adding additional information to a prior existing problem that you've already documented for this athlete? If you're unsure, you can click on cancel and just takes you now to the athlete profile. So the athlete profile, you can see a few things. If they've decided to share their information with us, you can see things like allergies, medications. They uploaded a photo, you can see that as well. Um, and then if there's any other prior documentation from this year's event, you would also see that in the problem list. Okay. Now, if you wanna document new incidences, again, whether it's a new injury or illness and they've just walked into your medical tent, two different ways of initiating that documentation. You can either press that plus button right here, or you can click on that providing care button. Once you do so, you get a few different options in regards to are you documenting an injury or an illness, or if your event is utilizing it, uh, we do also have a heat protocol function for specifically our heat decks and stuff like that, dealing with patients who are hyperthermic uh, during your actual event. Okay. So click on whichever option is most appropriate. If you are utilizing that heat protocol function, this is what that looks like. Um, again, essentially that heat protocol function is utilized to be able to document serial vital signs and also patient status and treatments, right? Uh, to again, kind of get a good timeline in regards to how that patient was treated. Uh, and again, what their status was prior to being transported out to a hospital. Okay. Now again, outside of the heat protocol function, if you're documenting either an injury or an illness, you can go ahead and click on either of those blue buttons. And then from there, again, the app is designed very much as a click and point kind of system. In regards to what I mean by that is essentially not much typing. It's very much just kind of click and select all the options that are most appropriate for that athlete or whatever documentation you are doing. Uh, we, again, we've modified to that platform simply because we found out that data collection is much cleaner that way and also make sure that we are actually putting in proper information. Okay, so again, all these different um, little fields right here. If you click on any of these things, it'll allow you to, to select options in regards to symptoms, opinion, so on and such. Again, I would say that of these, the most important one uh, is going to be adding that symptom and also that opinion to make sure that the data is appropriately showing up in our summary report, so on and such. But of course, again, please fill in as, met, as much information as possible that you have available to you when you have access to that patient and doing that assessment. Uh, we also say that for that opinion, again, if you are not a licensed healthcare provider or physician, or again, someone who can actually make diagnoses, again, we would always suggest that you go ahead and you speak with whoever the physician is in charge, um, whoever that may be, or again, whoever has that capability to actually make a diagnosis or an opinion, and then be able to document whichever one that that healthcare provider is telling you to actually document, especially if you're a student, so on and such. So again, as you document care, you would see now that you have an active event showing, which means that there is something going on with this athlete. Okay. Um, also, again, the date, uh, it is actually showing currently year, month, and then date. Um, and that's, again, because of some uh, international systems and stuff like that that, we, uh, that also utilizes our system. Um, but again, just to kind of let everyone know, you may potentially see a different format of the date uh, on the system itself. Right. But again, whichever problems that you document uh, are now going to show up in that problem list. Right. So again, to update or add any additional information to an existing problem, you can go ahead and click on whichever problem you're trying to update. 
it'll kind of highlight into that green color. And then you can click on providing care again, which is going to allow you to go through that same process we just talked about and be able to add in any additional information. Now, again, if you need to get in contact with potentially the runner or the athlete's emergency contact or get in contact with medical control or whatever it may be or other, other forms of leadership, you can click on whichever problem that you're trying to make a call about or get in contact with someone about. So again, here again, we're gonna select that angle sprain. So that's the problem kind of in note here. And then we're gonna click on that make a call button. Once you do so, a few different options in regards to what the event has decided is important, right? So again, you can either have a call function for medical transfer or again, call emergency contact. And the cool thing is that again, once you click on these things, we have numbers programmed if the event has decided to do so. Uh, and it will essentially utilize your phone's inherent call function and be able to call those numbers directly. Okay, so again, without having to look up any additional numbers or so on and such. Okay. Uh, so the next option, again, from this landing page is that after you record or actually, actually after you search that athlete's uh, ID number, if you click on minor assistance, this is another quick way to add in some very, very minor basic care for your athlete that typically did not require any type of assessment. Right, so again, things like um, a simple um, giving someone ice, a quick band-aid, so on and such. Again, these buttons are all customized to the specific event itself. So these may not be the specific buttons or options that you see for your specific event. Uh, you can select multiple ones at the same time, but whichever ones that you select, go ahead and select those by clicking on the actual buttons and then click on confirm. Once you do so, the problem or again, the documentation automatically resolves and you'll get this great little thumbs up um, pop up saying that great, you've successfully recorded and that means you are good to go. Now, if you're documenting potentially any non-athletes, things like spectators or family members, so on and such, you can go ahead and click on that little plus icon right at the top left-hand corner, even without entering a bib number. Once you click on that document spectator button, what happens is we actually generate or auto-generate a unique bib number or ID number for that spectator or that non-athlete. Right? From there, you can go in and add in as much demographics as possible. Again, we highly suggest, again, try to get at least the first name, right? Um, phone number is great if you have it. It will technically let you create a medical record with just the ID. But again, we, of course, we would encourage and we highly would appreciate any type of additional demographic information to make it a little bit easier post-event to identify who this person actually was. And then again, once you've filled out the demographics, go ahead and click on Create Medical Record. And then that will then allow you to document care on that specific uh, non-athlete or spectator. Okay. Now, if you click on that little menu or what we call like the little hamburger menu option, a few different things that you can do, right? Um, so again, to just kind of start from the top, you click on home, goes back to that search landing page that we've been on that where you can uh, enter in the bib number, so on and such. You click on your open records that actually allows you to open any unresolved uh, problems that you have documented. So again, any outstanding charts would show up on there. So make sure that you can go ahead and resolve those things again appropriately in a timely manner prior to the, uh, the end of the event. Right? Uh, you can see again a prior history of the problems or again records that you've resolved. Uh, the pick an event, again, if you're marking multiple events for some reason, you can go ahead and click on that to switch to a different event or if you moved areas, so on and such. And then, of course, again, the contacts, which we'll talk in, about in a little bit, and also a health center can be utilized uh, throughout the event, again, through the mobile app itself as well. Okay, great. So, again, after you've documented care, again, we've talked a little bit about closing that record to make sure that you don't have any outstanding charts left uh, prior to the end of the actual event itself. We would say that this probably is one of the most important steps in regards to documenting. So we know that the athletes are either still being provided for or they've actually left the event or left care to make sure that we kind of have accountability of all the athletes being seen throughout the event itself. Right. And also to just maintain good situational awareness. So, again, how do you actually close an event? So you can go ahead and click on whichever problem you're trying to resolve or close. Right. So, again, here we go back to this ankle sprain for athlete 222. Right, so once you click on it, again, it'll highlight that green color, and then you can go in and click on that Resolve Problem button. Once you click on that Resolve Problem button, you get a few disposition options, whether it's transferred to medical tent, transported to hospital, right, release to AMA, release family member, or even release to event, right? So again, whichever one is the most pertinent, go ahead and select that specific disposition, 
depending on which one it is, it may ask you for some additional information on the following uh, page, right? So again, if you click on transported to hospital, it may ask you what hospital they were transported to. And it also allows you to add in some notes and again, who the, um, the, care, the caring provider was um, on that next page. So again, it allows you to fill out some additional details to make sure that we do get good documentation. So again, once you resolve, again, you'll get a blue thumbs up this time. Uh, I kind of confirming that you have appropriately resolved the problem, click confirm, and then you're good to go. Now, again, we would highly encourage you in selecting that menu option and just taking a look at your open records probably every 30 minutes or so uh, at minimum to just make sure that you don't have anything accidentally still open, right? So if you go to the menu and if you click on your open records, Essentially, what we'll show you is all the active records that still have not been resolved. Super simple. All you have to do is just click on whichever one that you want to close out at the end of the day or again at your 30 minute check or again, whatever it may be at, at whatever time interval. We, of course, encourage to try to do this as live as possible uh, and not just again in every 30 minutes or again at the end of the day. We, of course, try encourage and resolve the problem as they are actually leaving the medical tent. But mistakes do happen and again, things do get very busy. So again, if you do notice any open records, go ahead and click on whichever one, and then go through the same workflow we just talked about in regards to closing that record or resolving that problem, and then it should go away from this specific list. Okay, great. So again, as you're closing records, again, just as a reminder, this is what the command side is looking at uh, on their specific command dashboard, right? So again, you can see, again, you can see this position's kind of updating. You can kind of see where they're happening in regards to what medical tent it was. So again, in regards to a situational awareness and resource management aspect, it's really, really imperative that every medical team member documents appropriately and as live as possible. Okay. Now again, finally, some of the communication tools that we've been talking about. So again, in the menu, if you click on contacts, you can actually utilize that function to get in communication or get in contact with other team members out in the field, right? So again, we actually have a chat function or we can also call that specific team member based on if they actually shared their phone number with us, right? Uh, we, so again, multiple different ways. So again, here you get to see my name, of course, here, but on your event, Pretty much anyone who registered for the event itself for the medical team will show up on this list and you do have that ability to either start a chat or by calling by clicking on either the phone icon or that little chat bubble icon you can also search for uh, search for team members by name uh, in the search bar as well and if you do click on that chat icon this is essentially kind of what it looks like you can actually rename the chat group right uh, you can actually send pictures you can send obviously text messages and stuff like that now, again, just as a reminder, this does not utilize your inherent phone messaging app, um, whether against iMessage or whatever text message it would be. This is essentially an in-app messaging function, right? So all the information is actually stored in the app. So because of that, we do encourage that all personal information or personal messages are actually just utilized um, via just your phone text messaging. You know, things like where, we, where do we want to go lunching and things that are non-medical or non-operational, we would say utilize it phone text messaging if you have that team member's phone number but anything that's event specific uh, we would highly encourage again you can utilize this if your event has decided to make this option active uh, for your actual team members itself right again everything is recorded everything is stored in, on our servers just as a reminder in regards to anything that is actually talked about in these specific messages uh, in regards to photos something i do also want to mention is that uh as part of the patient documentation, you can also upload photos, things like EKGs um, or other pictures of maybe, you know, things like deformities or whatever it may be um, as part of the documentation. And you can do that uh, when you're providing care and through that same way of workflow that we talked about in regards to from the athlete profile and selecting, you know, injury or illness, so on and such. Okay, great. So again, our app does also have an offline mode, so it does allow you to actually work even if you don't have Wi-Fi or cell service. If you are in offline mode, you would see kind of this yellow bar saying that you are working in offline mode. And in offline mode, the most important thing is that you are using the correct bib number or the ID number. Essentially what happens is that once you actually get connected back online, uh, the system will then kind of start to correlate information based on that ID number, even if you are working offline, right? The only thing that you will also notice is that in offline mode, you're not gonna really see a whole lot of information because the app can't 
pull information from our servers and show you on the mobile app, right? So that's why you see NA for the age here, you see just user, no name, no photos, right? Simply because it just can't talk to our servers and stuff. But once you get back online, everything will kind of hopefully connect back up and update all the information based on those ID numbers. Okay. So again, these are just, again, some of our kind of notices um, that we kind of just want to let everyone know in regards to health data privacy and also app security. And again, just as a reminder that and if you are able to do so, again, we highly, highly encourage and we really appreciate if you can document in real time as much as possible, right? All right, so again, thank you so much for uh, taking a listen to the actual training itself for the Race Safe app. Again, hope you have a wonderful and safe race. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to contact us through that support email that you see at the bottom of the screen. All right, thank you very much.